Hey, folks, how you doing? This is the Views Expressed Podcast. I'm doing a podcast. It's not a live show. There's so much going on around here <laughs> that, uh, my God, I can't stay. I just can't stay ahead of it. You know what I mean? Anyway, as you know, as I mentioned on the last broadcast, uh, my desktop computer took a dump. So I'm on my laptop, and there's no way for people to call in, blah, blah, blah. So, enough of that. Go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Check things out if you would, please. Thank you very much. Push it. Go to freeamericaradio.us. Freeamericaradio.us. You can donate to Free America Radio right there. Free America Radio Network needs your help to go to the next level. And if you're able to, great. If you're not able to, that's okay, too. If you want to sponsor a show, currently, right now, those prices on the sponsors page are good until the end of January. In February, they're changing. I may not have that page in February. That's how much they're changing. (laughs) I've got to work behind the scenes to give you more savings, you know. So, anyway... <clears throat> go to the sponsors page if you want to sponsor the show if you want to buy some stuff at the store you can go to the store page right there on freeamericaradio.us go to go to the store and purchase some products and merchandise promote your patriotism tell people about free america radio network because we tell the truth with the facts to back it up now other online and and other uh, truth telling shows don't have that type of motto but we do we do sharing the truth one fact at a time that's what we do i've listened to a bunch of shows and i can tell you right now Some of the shows, if you were to get rid of all the fluff, would only probably be about an hour long. Talking about shows that are two, three hours long. Yeah, they'd be about an hour long. But they have their own views, like I do. I tell you the stories. I give you my perspective on it. I share with you some more stories to back that one up and back up what I'm saying and I mean, they do too. But we have to talk to you and help you understand what's going on behind the scenes. I listen to everything because it helps me understand where other people are, you know, what what perspective other people have. And that's always good to have, not just one perspective, not just your little narrow-minded, have-your-blinders-on type of perspective. You have to look around and examine everything. And to me, that is, uh, that is key. And it's key to really understanding what you see. So it's helpful all the way around. Now, this podcast is going to be a little different. I'm not going to go to break here in about a minute like I usually do on the live broadcast. So about 20 after, Mark, I'm going to go to break. And it's not going to be two hours long. I'm only going to go an hour because I feel that uh, uh, there are certain things that I'm going to cover. I'm going to get into the news that's on Free America Radio uh, Facebook page and go from there. So if you have any questions whatsoever, if you want to ask me anything you like, you can. You can email me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. Freeamericaradio at usa.com. And ask me anything you like. If I don't know, I will tell you I don't know. It's as simple as that. You know, because I, folks, I don't know everything. <laughs> I really don't. And uh, no one does. You know, no one you have heard knows everything. They give you their view. They give you their perspective. Uh, some speculate on certain things, and that's okay because I, I think what what matters is the information being talked about. 
And what matters is getting the information out. No matter how you do it, you need to get the information out. And I feel that as far as, or, or in regards to the information, there's more than enough information out there to prove what's going on. Such as from the Drudge Report, NSA radio pathway to crack computers. Yeah, okay. This is from the New York Times, folks. Okay, from the New York Times. They're now telling you what is happening. NSA devises radio pathway into computers. From Washington, the National Security Agency has implanted software in nearly 100,000 computers around the world that allows the, U allows the United States to conduct surveillance on those machines and can also create a digital highway for launching cyber attacks. While most of the software is inserted by gaining access to computer networks, the NSA has increasingly made use of a secret technology that enables it to enter and alter data in computers even if they are not connected to the Internet, according to NSA documents, computer experts, and American officials. The technology, which the agency has used since the, at least 2008, relies on a covert channel of radio waves that can be transmitted from tiny circuit boards and USB cards inserted surreptitiously uh, into the computers. In some cases, they are sent to a briefcase size relay station that intelligence agencies can set up miles away from the target. The radio frequency technology has helped solve one of the biggest problems facing American intelligence agencies for years, getting into computers that adversaries and some American partners have tried to make impervious to spying or cyber attack. In most cases, the radio frequency hardware must be physically inserted by a spy, a manufacturer, or an unwitting user. The NSA calls its efforts more of an act of, quote, active defense, unquote, against foreign cyber attacks than a tool to go on the offensive. But when Chinese attackers place similar software on the com computer systems of American companies or government agencies, American officials have protested, often at the presidential level. Among the most frequent targets of the NSA and its Pentagon partner, United States Cyber Command, have been units of the Chinese Army, Let me, uh, which the United States has accused of launching regular digital probes and attacks on American ind industrial and military targets, usually to steal secrets or intellectual property. Let me say that again, folks. Among the most frequent targets of the NSA and its Pentagon partner, United States Cyber Command, have been units of the Chinese Army. Among the most frequent targets of the NSA and its Pentagon partner, United States Cyber Command have been units of the Chinese Army, which the United States has accused of uh, launching regular digital probes and attacks on American industrial, industrial and military targets, usually to steal secrets or intellectual property. Is that a counterattack? But the program, codenamed Quantum, has also been successful in inserting software into Russian military networks and systems used by the Mexican police and drug cartels, trade institutions inside the European Union, and sometime partners against terrorism like Saudi Arabia, India, and Pakistan, according to officials in the NSA map that indicates sites of what the agency calls, quote-unquote, computer network exploitation. Okay. 
I know for a fact, going as far back as, let's put it this way, going as far back as probably 1978, 79, around in there, I know for a fact that the I know that the federal government has been keeping tracks on anyone who has access to the internet let me point something out to you the HTTP that you use the dot mil that you use the dot net that you use that came from the military folks that came from the military i remember walking in to uh going to high school and walking into my my friend says, "Hey, I got to go to class, you know." Just, and we walked over there, and I had to go to class too, but I, I was getting there, and we were going in the same direction, and so we went into the computer room, and I got to tell you, yeah, let, let 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 me put it to you this way: it it was at the time when you had to dial or yeah dial a number and take the ha handset of the telephone and put it into a cradle and you know that all that noise that you heard as a dial up that's what he was using and 15 years later or longer 18 years later I was using the same thing through AOL and what seriously made me think about everything up in that up until that point was the fact that and this is when i began to start researching and 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 looking into what was going on and what got me thinking about that stuff was the fact that if the military, and I had my sources back then, if the military could tap into a phone line, why do you think they were copper? Then they know what we're doing. I remember watching a, a documentary uh, many years ago about... Uh, the mafia and organized crime, where it came from, yada, yada, yada. And a portion of the documentary mentioned that the FBI was really spying on these people by going in, disguising themselves as, you know, telephone company workers, taking two little clips, going to the telephone box, taking two little clips, finding out what you know, through trial and error, what room they were in or whatever, if they already knew the room, they just went to it, connect the clips and could hear everything they were doing up in that room because they were on the phone. I began to look at all this stuff. I began to examine it and I began to see where all of these things were coming from. I began to see what our military was doing. I began to see what, where our military was getting their orders to do all this stuff with, folks. Okay? This was back in the late 70s, early 1980s. And when I began to see that, I, I looked at everything and I'm going, wait a minute. Something is not right. And I began to really, really examine why this was going on 
Okay. And as I began to look at all this stuff, I wound up realizing that you and I were not safe. When you consider that Aldous Huxley, uh, Aldous Huxley talked about it. Uh, when you look at books uh, like Animal Farm or, you know, all of that. Or you look at George Orwell, 1984, George Orwell, a.k.a. Eric Blair, British Intelligence. When you look at all of that, okay, I'm telling you, we're not safe. None of us are, okay? None of us are. I mean, we can do whatever we need to do, folks. We can take care of ourselves. But none of us are safe. None of us. And I've never understood why people... You and I, why people could never grasp the concept that our government, Washington, D.C., the very people that you voted into office, and I did too, why they would want to enslave us. It's not about, and I heard somebody today, I had to take some water, I heard somebody today on a show that said it's not about the surveillance, even though that's going on right now. It's about, it's about the metadata. Why did the DHS spend $2 billion of your money, possibly more, to build a data retrieval center, storage center, out in Bluffdale, Utah? Why? And it's breaking down. Because they didn't anticipate the overwhelming volume of information they would be getting, apparently. But it's not about who you talk to and what you guys talk about. It's not that. It's the metadata, even though they look at those other ones I just mentioned. It's the metadata. People are going to look at me and say, well, why would they want to listen to my conversations? Why? Well, there's no reason to. Uh... Because they're criminals, folks. They're going to do everything they can to overwhelm you with all sorts of bullcrap propaganda from the state-run media. And they're going to take you to the cleaners because they're going to take everything you have. And they want to find out where you live, where you work, where you go to, you know, to get your Starbucks, where you go to Starbucks. They want to know wherever you go, what park you go to, who you go with, and uh, whether or not you're cheating on your wife or your husband. So, I mean, they want to know everything. And it's really not that difficult to do, folks. It's really not that difficult to do. I remember listening to other people, uh, you know, talking about, well, I had a private detective uh, uh, track down my husband or my wife or whatever it was, right? Well, now you don't need them because you got the surveillance. You know where the private detective is? You know where, uh, how they track you now? Through your cell phone. That's exactly it, folks. I'll be back right after this. Get your morning started with the morning brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to Radio Rock the Blitz dot blogspot dot com. Misfit, 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 Misfit,
It's the 515 with Zamo on Zamo Radio. AM 1700, Daytona Beach, Holly Hill. And Southnet 1. Hey folks, how you doing? Hey, welcome back. This is the Views Express podcast. As you can tell, I'm not live. I'm usually live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Things are changing around Free America Radio Network, and so I'm trying to stay on top of it. So I don't procrastinate that much. So, because <laughs> I'm bad, folks. I really am. Anyway, hey, if you have any questions, comments, whatever you want to tell me, hey, if you got articles, a blog, uh, you write articles, whatever it is you do, please send that, and I'll post them on the website at freeamericaradio.us. You can, you can send that to freeamericaradio at usa.com. Yes, if you write articles and want to write for Free America Radio Network, you can do that or contribute to Free America Radio Network. Uh, on the uh, blog site on uh, freeamericaradio.us. Please send your articles and stuff to me at freeamericaradio at usa.com. That's freeamericaradio at (sighs) usa.com. Jeez. Okay, go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Yes, that's where it is. It's on Facebook. Hey, a little something uh, for you all. I am. Uh, I also uh, am looking for some voice talent. Yes, voice talent. Not only do I do this show, I also write small episodes, uh, little shows, little uh, a serial I'm working on at this point, uh, uh, an episodic serial, if you will. And I need some voice actors. Yes, some voice artists. And. Uh, if you need any more answers, and if you have a lot more questions, please email Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com. Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com. More than happy to answer any question you have. And uh, please send your audio clips there as well. Eastland Radio Theater at USA.com. Frank Radio on Facebook. Check this out, folks. You got Wells Fargo? You got Wells Fargo? Because if you do, if I'm like cutting out every so often, uh, just let me know. If you're, uh, you know, just email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Um, If you're with Wells Fargo, check this out. Wells Fargo now charging $5 for deposits. Don't believe me? Click on the uh, link there in Free America Radio Facebook page and uh, read it. Effective April 7th, 2014, the fee for deposited U.S. or foreign currency uh, denominated international items includes drafts, will be $5 per item. Mr. Quayle, Monday, uh, January 13th, 2014, I got a notice uh, from my bank, this is what Steve Quayle says. Go, go to stevequayle.com, too, because, man, he's got some info you need to look at. He banks with Wells Fargo. He said it was a notice to inform, as he says, it was a notice to inform me with, uh, with my checking and savings accounts with them. Uh, and he goes down and he tells you everything about it. Or actually... Uh, Someone from Florida tells Steve Quayle about what's happening. And so this person in Florida sent Steve Quayle a photo of the notice that they got. It wasn't Steve Quayle himself. It was someone who sent him a letter. So, yes, Wells Fargo is going to start charging for deposits. Okay. Yes, they are. 
from Minds, M-I-N-D-S, Minds.com, DEA smuggling Mexican drugs. Recent investigation by El Universal, uh, El Universal, has uncovered court documents directly linking United States government to assisting Mexican drug cartels in the shipments of billions of dollars of cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine across Mexican-U.S. borders. The investigation by El Universal, Spanish, has re reveled uh, or has revealed court documents linking the United States Drug Enforcement Agency to the Sinola, 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 Sin, I don't know, S I N A L O A, Sinaloa, there we go, Sinaloa drug cartel in Mexico. The Sinaloa cartel, among other things, are well known to supply 80% of the drugs into the city of Chicago. It would seem that the DEA, in fact, may have been the one supplying 80% of Chicago's drugs. Shall I go on? The known head of the Sinaloa cartel is a man by the name of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Guzman is regarded as many by many as one of the most powerful drug traffickers across the globe. However, the Drug Enforcement Agency has a different opinion regarding Mr. Guzman's finances and operations. Rather than prosecuting Mr. Guzman, stopping Mr. Guzman, or actively working to prevent Mexican drugs from reaching American streets by the hands of Mr. Guzman, the DEA seemed to have been actively assisting Mr. Guzman, in exchange for vital information regarding other drug car uh, Mexican uh, cartels, uh, the DEA provided assistance in getting Mr. Guzman's drugs into the United States. Members of the DEA were also instructed to not pick up Sinaloa members during their investigative actions. In effect, the Sinaloa drug cartel were able to use the DEA as a means of exterminating their competition and extending their empire's reach. One can only imagine, were any drugs seized via Sinaloa Intel were disposed of after confiscation. Maybe one of those plane crashes in Mexico involving jets registered to U.S. shell companies were just the DEA, DEA's way of saying thanks for the help. Or perhaps the DEA sold rival gangs drugs back to the Sinaloas to help replenish the U.S. government uses um, to uh, use as to finance other questionable operations around the globe. After all, $3 billion to help fund international terrorists looks kind of bad on the budget request form. You can continue to read that um, at thewestwire.com. Okay, just click on the link there. It says continue reading. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to, I, I, I'm just going to put it out there, folks. Okay, I'm just going to put it out there. All of it, the drug war, the war on drugs uh, that President Nixon started in 1972, or something like that, around 71, 72, is a humongous, massive, freaking waste of taxpayer money. And I'll tell you why. Because you are paying taxes to indirectly ship guns to the Mexican drug cartels. I don't care who they are. And you and your tax money that you pay into the government are paying for those drugs to come into the United States. Okay? It's as simple as that, folks. It's as simple as that. Now, I don't know what to say when it comes to someone's understanding of the effects of drugs in a family. I, I don't know what to tell you to help you understand all of this, okay? <clears throat> and the thing that, yeah, the phone's ringing, sorry, I forgot to turn it off. The thing that you have to understand is, is that the drug war is a complete farce. Sheriffs have come out, D former DEA officers have come out, 
all these other people have come out and said it's a massive, massive farce. It, it serves nobody. It, it doesn't serve anybody's interest except, except bringing in billions and billions and billions of dollars to the coffers in Washington, D.C. When in fact, folks, you are paying your money to have all those drugs shipped into the U.S., to have guns shipped down to the Mexican drug cartels to protect our the investment. And then all those billions of dollars don't even come back to you. They go back, you know, into the coffers of Washington, D.C. How's that for laundering money? Wachovia, I, I think, uh, is not around anymore, but uh, uh, Bank of America, all these other ones have been caught with their hand in the cookie jar accepting deposits from Mexican drug cartels. Okay? I mean, it's that, <clears throat> it's that unreal, folks. And, and that's why people don't believe it. That's why people don't believe it, because, oh, how can the government do this? How come, oh, yeah, they wouldn't allow that to happen. Yes, they would. You know why? Because they cannot tax you 100% of your wages. That, that's just totally illegal and totally pointless, because it still wouldn't be enough. So what lucrative investment do they uh, do they have that could bring in billions of dollars every month? What what do they? Illegal drug trafficking. Go back and look at the movie, if you will. Go back and watch the movie, The Godfather. In their little meeting... And, and I'll try to find the audio for this and play it on my next show, hopefully live, if I don't have too much work to do. That's why I'm only doing a, another uh, 28 minutes of this show. But you go watch the movie The Godfather, and in a meeting that there is, one of the, the heads of one of the families says, we will not, you know, we'll, we'll do this drug deal We'll, we'll deal the drugs, but we won't do it near schools, and we'll do it in the minorities' neighborhood. That way, you know, they're all dogs. They'll, you know, they'll kill themselves. The Godfather was made back in 1972, or 71, 72. And it was very, very accurate. Okay? So, in terms of this whole farce of the drug war. I mean, your money is supplying the drugs to America, your tax dollars, folks. How else do you? And of course, the confiscation that they have when they bust local drug dealers. They take all of their drugs, all of their cars, everything that they have, their guns, their money, whatever, they, they take it upon themselves. They give themselves big raises. They send those drugs, you know, wherever they need to go. You know why they bust all these local drug gangs? Because they don't like the competition. Okay? They don't like the competition. And when it comes down to your neighborhood... When it comes down to you, when it comes down to your city streets and you hear about people getting shot in, in drug deals or, or somebody overdosing or whatever it is, or, you know, a, a famous actor or singer getting busted for drugs, where in the hell do you think that came from? Where do you think it came from, folks? <clears throat> it came from you. It, it came from you. And that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to, uh, <clears throat> that's one of the things I wanted to tell you is that to make my point, you are funding the killings in your own neighborhood. 
You are. When you hear of a drug bust down the street, the drugs came from you because your tax dollars paid our government and the DEA to go to Mexico to take the drugs to bring them back and to give the cartels the guns to protect the investment that the DEA and, and, and the federal government made in those drug cartels. So don't sit there and feel sorry for the people that got busted because they got busted because the government doesn't like competition. And they got busted with the drugs that you indirectly supplied to them. Okay? Okay. Can 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 you comprehend that one? Okay. This is why I say, and and people have been killed, you know, in drug deals and yada yada yada. I had a friend of mine over twenty years ago was killed in a bad drug deal. I don't want to hear it anymore. Legalize all of the drugs. This is my mantra. But. But. It's never going to happen because the government, Washington, D.C., the DEA, the FBI, the Bureau of Fire, uh, Tobacco and Firearms, the courts, the lawyers, all of those people are making way too much money on it with it being illegal. Okay? You understand me? It's a big ass racket. And we ain't the ones getting rich. You know what I'm saying? And this is like the military-industrial complex that Eisenhower talked about when he exited uh, in 1961. This is what General uh, Smedley Butler was talking about when he said, War is a racket. Everybody makes money. Follow the money, folks. It's as simple as that. Follow the money. Your tax dollars are funding those drug cartels in Mexico and elsewhere. Your money is funding the military to protect the opium fields in Afghanistan. Okay? This is what's going on, folks. And if you don't get it now, you know, all you got to do is just take a beer out of your fridge, sit in your chair, watch your stupid sports program and just let the world go by outside of your house but when you try to stand up for your protected constitutional your constitutionally protected rights they're going to come after you and drop a hammer on you harder than you could ever imagine because you're a patriot and I'm telling you that as a patriot, as I am right now, I will stand on the Constitution and the Bill of Rights prior to 1871. And I will tell the NSA and everybody else in Washington, D.C. where they can go. And if they don't know, I'm going to point them the way. And if they don't want to go, I'll help them get there. What about you? I'll stand up for you and your rights on the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, not the corporation of the United States that was created in 1871. Go look it up. Go look it up. Corporation of the United States. Yeah. Corporation in the United States, the Act of 1871. Go look it up. That might be two different things, but I'm sure it's the same. Right now, I'm going to take a well-deserved break. Let's take five, shall we? I'll be back in five minutes, 15 seconds. Late Night in the Midlands is an alternative media that covers the truth, theory, and fact that the lamestream media won't talk about. We cover everything from the known and the unknown, the normal and the paranormal. The government lies, and the government ties, and even their thrive. We tell what's coming, what's going, whether it be politics or archaeologists. We have an amazing fan base, and our shows are all archived to be heard millions 
of Times More. So tell your friends, your family, and anybody you care about about LateNightInTheMidlands.com. Become a member and be informed. Get your morning started with the Morning Brew on 92.6 The Blitz. Music from the 60s, 70s, and more. The Blitz 92.6. Go to Radio Rock the Blitz. Blogspot.com. Free Talk Live. You give someone an ounce of liberty and they'll go around abusing it and harming everyone else with it. If we legalize guns... People um, be shooting people everywhere. Right. If you legalize prostitution, people will be having sex on the street corners. <laughs> if you legalize drugs, we'll have heroin vending machines in the streets. We've heard it all on Free Talk Live. <laughs> they take it to the most absurd, illogical extremes. And you're absolutely right, Alexander. It's okay for them to have freedom. Yeah, you can give them a gun. They won't go around shooting people. But watch out with their neighbor because you give them a gun, they'll go around in a rampage around the right. city killing everyone. Oh, oh, but yes, they can be trusted and apparently the government can be trusted too because magically, oh, yeah. magically, we only elect the best of the best, the cream of the crop. The bureaucrats that are administering <laughs> these programs are the upper echelon of society, the most trustworthy individuals. Oh, yeah. Sometimes when I squint, I swear I can see a halo above their heads. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Are you tired of the mainstream media? The media that is so biased, you wouldn't even let your dog listen to it. Well, there's an answer. Angel Club. On Radio Freedom. Just listen to her fans. One hell of a writer. I've read a considerable amount of her articles and I'm quite impressed. Until Angel, my life was void of meaning. I want to thank you for saving my goldfish from drowning. I love Angel Clark's honesty and her down to earth concern about the people. She is very dedicated. Angel, we need you. This Angel's a sexy woman. I think she's going to go places, but I don't know why. Ladies and gentlemen, she does a good job. If it wasn't for Angel, you saved his life, and I will be indebted to you forever. Sussex, Angel.com. <laughs> be a part of Angel's Army. Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. on RadioFreedom.us. Free Talk Live. Do you guys have a zombie plan? I'm, I'm just wondering what this country is going to do if we had some sort of apocalypse like that. Like a what zombie attack. Do? People coming yeah, out like of the ground, like in Thriller, or, like in, uh, no, in Michael Jackson's like 28 Thriller. Days later, like a virus or something. Oh, okay. I mean, people don't come back to life. Well, no, there are different kinds of zombies out there. <laughs> Now, um, but, well, let me go through the, the, the types of zombies. I mean, you've got the ones that can crawl out of the ground, right? And then she was talking about, like, an infection kind of zombie, mm-hmm. like a la Resident Evil, for instance. So, ideally, if you're going to have to perish at the, the hands of a zombie, which would be the preference? Would you prefer to have your brains eaten, or would you prefer to become one of them? I think I'd rather just die. Um, yeah? Yeah, I'd, the last thing I'd want is, of course, the people you split up with, and I'm talking my wife and my child, I'm coming back, I'm wanting to eat Laura's brains. <laughs> It's bad. It's bad. (laughs) Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Get ready. Hey, folks, how you doing? Welcome back. 
That little extended break there. <clears throat> How y'all doing? This is the Views Express Live. Well, it's the podcast anyway. I decided not to do a live show today because I got so much going on. I got to catch up on it, man. It sucks procrastinating. You know that? It just really, really sucks. Hey, I want to give a big shout out to Nick Tucker over at Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook. Go to his episodes. He has a show, too, called Distorted Reality, of course. And you can go check it out at distortedreality.podbean.com distortedreality.podbean.com check out the show tell him email him uh, on his site uh, there at uh, distortedreality.podbean.com or on distorted reality with nick tucker tell him i sent you anyway i also like to give a big shout out to mr bob brutus over at waking up the masses.com go check out the shows that he has over there wakingupthemasses.com you can also listen to his show <clears throat> kicking the capstone check it out it's really really cool if you want to know the inner workings of uh the freemasons and the illuminati and all of those folks yeah check that out um i don't know what his take is on mark dice but mark dice is pretty good too go check out markdice.com or go check out mark dice on YouTube. Check him out as well. Um, oh, there's just a whole bunch of other people um, as well. But this last segment, I'm, I'm going to, I want to talk about this. I'm going to, I'll talk about this. Here we are. We're coming up to the midterm elections in 2014 and, and later on this year. And we have, we have a, well, plenty of candidates on the libertarian side. And my question is, are they truly libertarian? Not liberal, but libertarian. And how many of those are wolves in sheep's clothing? How many people right now can look at a Democrat and Republican and tell the difference? By the way, let me uh, fill you in on something. There is no difference between a Democrat and a Republican because they're both paid by the same people. I mean, think about it, folks. Just, 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 just wrap your mind around that piece of information right there. They are both paid for by the same people okay if you heard an echo there i was checking something <clears throat> there is no difference between a democrat and a republican anymore and i'll tell you why because back in the uh, in history if you look at history of where the of where the republicans came from and where the democrats came from you will see that there was at that time a a a reasonable difference okay when you check history there's a reasonable difference between the two but now you just 200 and or however long it's been since we've recorded all these elections uh there is no difference and there stopped being a difference or i would say the the door was closed on all on both parties and they just became one uh, in 1913 under President Woodrow Wilson who was a progressive as they're called okay progressive keep that word in mind folks I'll tell you tell you a little bit about that okay now as we're coming up in the midterms we have to understand that there is uh, uh, hold on even though there is not a difference between the parties, you are the difference between the parties. Because the parties, both parties, are they're all one and the same. It's one party. That's the way it is. That's the way it's been for a hundred years. And I can tell you this much, okay? The... Um, 
I can tell you this much. What you do will determine the direction of this country. Okay? It will determine the direction of this country. Now, 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 remember what I said. Both parties are the same. There is absolutely no difference whatsoever. Both parties are the same. Uh, They've been that way for quite a while. Okay? Doesn't really matter. You matter. But here's a little something that you need to know, too. (coughs) Your vote does not count. Your vote does not count. Okay? Your vote does not count. And why should it? Because in a dictatorship, in a fascist society that we live in, in a dictator that we have in office, he'll, whatever you want, he doesn't care. Okay? And he'll do whatever he wants to do, as you have seen throughout his presidency. Okay? Here's the thing. 237, 238 years ago, a small number of people, some say about 3%, of British colonists, mind you, in the 13 colonies that we had here, decided they had had enough of the taxing, of all of that. Now this, they, believe me, those colonies grew within a matter of about 150 to 200 years in those areas, in New England, okay? But in 1773, 1774, 75, 76, they got sick and freaking tired of being taxed. And according to the numbers that I've seen, 3% of the population back then beat back the biggest army in the world, the British Empire, and said no. Then they went to King George and told him to take their taxes, take his taxes and shove it up. His wazoo, his kingly derriere. Well, go look at history. Over the years, the British were trying to get back those colonies. Over the years, the country grew. People started going out west and, and, and doing all of that and trading. And they've traded with the French. They've traded with the English. They've traded with the Canadians. They've traded with Mexicans down in the southern border. Why? Because there was no border at that time that we could remember. They had trade. It was perfect. It was great. Everybody was happy. And then a civil war happened in 1861 when President Abraham Lincoln was in office. And he, from what I understand, was the only one that implemented martial law. Now, in 1871, six years after the Civil War ended, the British came along, specifically the Rothschilds, and said, oh, you're broke, we can help. Here, let's extend some trade, shall we? Oh, by the way, let's do this to help the trade, shall we? And they developed the Corporation of the United States, totally doing away with, well, not doing away with, but circumventing the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States of America. 
That was ratified December 15, 1791. 80 years prior. Okay. Now, in 1913, President Woodrow Wilson, who I said was progressive, is this is what dictionary.com says of a progressive favoring or advocating progress, change, improvement, or reform as opposing to wishing to maintain things as they are, especially in political matters. That's number one. Number two, making progress, yada, 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 you know that. Three, char characterized by uh, such progress, of course. Of, this is the fourth uh, meaning, of or pertaining to any of the progressive parties in politics. Five, going forward on or onward, passing successfully from one member of a series to next. Proceeding step by step, basically two of the meanings, basically are political meaning, do away with everything that's, you know, change things for the better. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Woo, yeah. No, it didn't. Like I said, folks, I'm only going to go on an hour today because it's a podcast. I usually do an hour, uh, two hour live show, but because I'm behind on a lot of my stuff and a lot of my research I'm doing, uh, yeah, I, I could only have enough time to do an hour. And uh, I want to thank you for listening. If you have any questions, comments, you hate me, you like me, you want to throw tomatoes at me, and email me freeamericaradio at usa.com. Free America Radio at USA.com. Go to Free America Radio .us and check that out. If you like the show and you want to sponsor the show, you can do that or you can donate. There's a donate button there. Go ahead. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, I'm normally on Monday, uh, Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and following this show is Waking Up the Masses with. Bob Brutus, um, but he go go to wakingupthemasses.com. He has uh, a lot of stuff playing there. It will just automatically play. There's a program that he has. Anyway, yeah, it's just so much going on that I got behind myself. So that's why these last two days I've done podcasts instead of live shows. So my apologies to you. If you have questions, I got answers. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. Email me free America radio at USA.com. Free America radio at USA.com. There's a lot that we want to talk about tomorrow, and I'm sure to have a live show tomorrow, okay? 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on Spreaker.com and free America radio.us. I'll also have the Wayne S. Pierce show on tomorrow, live at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. And in the meantime, folks, email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com. And remember this, we the people have the power, for we are America. America.